Welcome back on the second half here of Dropped Frames. Zeke, we teased. Let's talk. What are you addicted to? Where Where has your mind been the past couple of days? What's the, I, TFT, baby. Do you hear that? Team fight Zeke, tactics. Do you, do you hear that? What's that? That's my wife's bank account just going cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've only spent 10 bucks so far. Um, and I, I, You're I, off the show. I uh, probably... I probably foresee myself uh, spending ten bucks uh, for for the new seasons and stuff, or if there's a you know a frivolous thing that I want, but I have no problem with that. Like I've already spent fucking so many hours just idly, just like watching you know TV or whatever, and playing it on my laptop or played it on my phone on the drive because it was a long drive. I mean, eight hour drive from uh, Billings to uh, to Denver uh, for Thanksgiving, so. Play a little bit on the on the drive on my phone. It's got a stuff. mobile UI. Yeah. Oh, Dude, I didn't know that. The mobile UI is very good. And in fact, like the the I, the tablet and and mobile make it really easy to play. Um, in fact, in some ways, it's better than the PC UI. Wow. Uh, just just in just in because they have to make it streamlined and have to make it more like accessible or whatever. Yeah. So and then use the, the uh, League of Legends launcher as well. That's the big reason. That launchers that is awful. huge, yeah. Yeah, it's abysmal. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. But uh yeah, I've been playing I've been playing a lot of that lately and uh I'm starting like it's one of those uh or it's 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 been uh you know how the like there's ranks, right? There's bronze, silver, gold, whatever. Yeah. Oh you're I playing rank. Just, yeah. I recently got to gold and uh I cannot fucking dig my way out of gold for your heart. That's like, called, your heart stuck. That's what that's called. Yeah. Your heart stuck like, to gold. It's a huge skill jump from silver to gold. And I am just getting fucking like, I look at the board and I'm like, what in the fuck am I doing wrong that I was doing so right before? I think gold's pretty good. That, like, that's pretty good for being brand new to it. I, I want to say that's pretty good rank. Chat will let me know yeah, if it's I not mean, here in just a second. I'm sure. A lot of fucking hours, man. I'll tell you. And if, for those of you who don't know what Team Fight Tactics is, it's uh, Auto Chess from uh, like Auto Chess was a was it was it a just an offshoot of it was a Dota Legends mod or, that then Dota. they go, made in. Yeah, you know. it was so successful that it became a entire genre, yeah. and then everyone copied it. And the people that copied it correctly and actually continually update it is League of Legends, and now it's I think like a mm -hmm. major flagship game for them. Yeah, it's yeah, right. no, like all you have to do is just like look up TFT comps and see how many fucking websites are dedicated, or at least have a dedicated like section of like team comps, champions, all that kind of shit. Um, and uh, I've been doing that lately. Uh, you and you kind of have to like if you want to keep up on what is uh you know you got to keep up on what's being nerfed, what's being patched, what's doing this, what's doing that. Yeah, like the team that worked last week uh, is getting just fucking crushed this week because of you know things that they've patched in and out and that kind of stuff. Um, but like also going from from one rank to the next, like man, this was easy. Like I got like I could just throw this team together and be fine. And now I got to be like fuck. I got to know exactly where to place them, exactly what what items to give them, what power ups to take, or uh, uh what uh synergies matter and all this kind of stuff and it's not just like it's not straightforward anymore and i'm i'm i love it i love it <laughs> i i have like you know you have your your streamer setup my streamer setup is the classic h setup which is the you know gaming screen and two vertical screens right and on on like i have the game on the, the front screen and on the the right screen i have like all my cheat sheets I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that, okay that's got that and it fucks me a lot of times because i'm like Wait a minute! I gotta do this, and then and then the, the round goes, and I'm like, "Shit! I didn't put the God damn it!" <laughs> you know, like, and also it it very much appeals to my my gambling nature because there's a there's a gambling aspect of it, just fake gambling, uh, or excuse me, in game gambling because you in order to get a fresh set of champions to pick from, you have to spend uh, the gold you collect, so you can either choose to spend it on experience leveling up meaning you can put more pieces on the board yeah or getting like gambling getting better pieces and man sometimes it just feels like you get fucked by the by the rng 
Um, you're not, you never get that last piece that you need or whatever, but that's part of the game. And part of my downfall is that <laughs> I'm more too much? like, I want well, uh, one of the tactics or one of the, like the, the basic things is just like, sit there and let your, let, you know, let your interest grow. Cause the more you get more gold, you gain the more interest you get. Right. So you just sit there and you have to let your interest grow. And I'm like, uh, I mean, I, I, I probably could get that. I, I'm going to get that one. And then you just go like, go from like your 50 gold, which is the max interest you can get. And then you go down to like 20 and you're like, why did I do that? <laughs> and you hate yourself all the while. And it feels good to compete. It really does. It's something that I feel like I can, I can get my head around. I mean, I'll, you know? I'll say this much. Uh, Strippin plays TFT uh, on stream like 10 hours a day. And you're better than him. He's silver. Uh, <laughs> so you got something going on. Because uh, <laughs> Strippin's pretty good at League of Legends uh, in terms of just the base game. Like, he's a very competitive gamer. Uh, so you're... Okay. I think someone in my chat said that gold is like the top 30% of the player base. So none to, none to be ashamed of, for sure. Especially being that you started, what, two weeks ago? So you're getting up there. Yeah. 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 It's... it's Once I hit that gold... Uh, it's one of those it's one of those feelings you're like all right i can say i hit gold now now i'm now i'm not like for for a minute there i was like i'm just gonna experiment with like these like how 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 i play how do i play because i can't you can't go once you hit a a certain like the tier you can't go down again right you you get to gold there's four tiers you can go down within those four you know gold one two three four Right, but once you're at gold four zero points, like you can't go anywhere lower than that. So I'm just sitting there, like, okay, now I'm gonna really play, and I and I do like one like second, third place or something. Okay, now I'm gonna do it. Next game, I'm back down to zero. God damn, fuck this <laughs> fucking game. I'm oh, sorry, so, I didn't mean to yeah. wake you up, honey. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. I'm yelling too loud. I apologize. That's me. I'm playing. I was playing a lot of just base League of Legends, but now they're in. Does TF2 do like a preseason? Because uh, like normal League of Legends right now is in preseason, where it's like a two month two month break where they basically turn off actual ranked mode, and now it's right. Like ranked right, right. still exist, but it's not necessarily the rank during the actual season. Uh, and so I kind of like lost interest. Does TF2 do anything like that? Uh, or is it I'm always not sure, on? man. I haven't, I think I I haven't been playing long enough, but I think it might be always on. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. They're saying they're saying there's no uh, seasons or anything. It's just always on. Also, TFT, not TF2. Yeah. TF2 is yeah. a <laughs> FPS. Yeah. But it's it's. Who's your it's, Who's your character? So, what's your What's your build? Talk my, shop my, for the people that listen. Man, my go-to comp right now. <laughs> your uh, comp. I'm really. Yeah, I know. I'm saying I'm using the, the lingo, I guess. Yeah, that's, but, that's um, what I want to hear. Uh, my go-to comp right now, I love the challengers. The challengers are, uh, the they you, you get a team of challengers, and they once they make a kill, they get faster. Oh. So every kill, you're going faster, so it builds upon itself, but you got to get that first kill. And if you come up against like some sort of tank front person that like has a lot of armor or shield or whatever, you can't get the, it's hard to get the challenger rolling because it just like, you're just trying to kill that front thing. So placement, you got to make sure to like place them and stuff. And I'm just starting to get into the, to the headspace of like checking other people's. Cause I like, that becomes an important thing to check other people's, uh, how their boards are set up. Of course. Yeah. Um, scout. I mean, not early game, obviously, but like you gotta, yeah, you gotta scout their team. If you're like the last, you know, five, four or five players left. You got to scout them, see their placement on the board, uh, act accordingly, shit like that. A lot of times, like if you don't have it, your team, cop will come against, come up against your like kryptonite or whatever. Um, and they'll have like a back row that you can't get to. And the back row is just uh, some spellcaster that's just fucking wasting your ass because you can't get to that person. So like, man, there's some, there've been some real good games uh where it's just me and me and one other person just battling it out going back and forth going wins win for win like gambling like i need that one fucking last piece and i can beat your ass (laughs) 
Like, comes up to the last game. We both got, like, two or three health left. And I'm like, I fucking got that fucker. Bam! And then you bring it out. And you're like, I'm going to kick his. Oh, he got something. Oh, no. That's a loss. Damn it. And that's a loss. Maybe Is it only top, it, like, but, uh, pull, like, one, two, and three if you move up? Or if you win? Top like, that's four. Top four. Okay. And it's eight yep. people yep. in a game? Yep. Eight people in a game. Uh, top four get uh, points going up. Uh but it also it also like encourages you to keep your head in the game because if you like get a seventh or an eighth, that's like a fucking shitload of points that just go mm. your uh, rank points just bust you down, you know. So you gotta like keep your average, like do do a good job average. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's cool. I'm, uh, I've never of all the games, I would never have suspected that TF two was your or Jesus Christ TFT was your PvP. Uh, obsession yeah it's 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 not turn-based but it, it kind of feels like turn-based the, the reason why it's not turn-based because there's there is a time limit yeah. you have to do things within a given time but if you're not playing uh hyper roll which is basically like double speed uh tft mm-hmm. you have enough time if you uh have an idea of what you want like the, the team comp you want to make if you don't, though, you can be fucked for, like, I've got three different avenues I can go down, and they're all, like, going up equally at the same time. None of them, like, stand out until you're just like, shit, what do I do? Like, you got to pick one and go with it, and then you end up picking the wrong one, and, you know, you lose. Yeah. We should, you should uh, hit up Strippin'. He runs a, they have, like, a ton of people that play uh, TFT together on his channel. Maybe you should jump into some of those games or something. I think he's probably no wait. It's Wednesday. He takes Wednesdays off. You say he's probably playing right now. He'll be playing tomorrow. Probably playing. Well, the, the thing is, off. like, he's I, probably I playing streamed right, it a little bit. He's probably playing right now. <laughs> You're probably right. Let's go. Yeah. I I streamed like an hour and a half, maybe two hours of it, and I was like, back seats open because I just wanted to see like everybody. Everyone's got opinions for many many. Everybody's got a different different opinion. Like. No, you, you don't put that on that, you idiot. Like, yeah, of course you do. Yeah. You know, that kind of shit, so. Competitive it's backseat gaming the, yeah. is very different from, like, narrative or story-focused backseat gaming games because it, it gets, it, it is competitive in the backseating, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, people are competitive within the channel to backseat better than someone else. Uh, it's really wild to see that, but it's cool. I'm glad you're Hunter, uh, Do I have trouble remember building the artifact stuff? I do. Uh, that's why I have cheat sheets up because mm. there's there's items that you can get item and you and you combine them together and they make a different thing, and that's how you power up your champions. Uh, I have a cheat sheet set up, but uh, it's getting to the point where like there's only like out of the out of, out of however many combinations, there's only ten you use regularly, and then like the like twenty, like ten more that you kind of like are situational. Like there's like the biggest or, or or the best items for tank or uh sniper or you know magic users stuff like that. Right. They all have the the best and they all sh- like it's the best for all of them around the uh, like across the board. So like I know those ones, but uh, situationally you I I'm not good yet. Not good situationally. Like uh, I can't make this thing and I can't fucking find another item. So. Do I put the thing on the champion or do I wait to see if I find what I need? Right. Another gamble, like a time gamble. Um, Hurricane actually had the same question I had in my chat. Is is there like a third party app? So when you play League of Legends, there's a app, there's multiple apps, but the one that I use calls Blitz mm-hmm. and actually puts an overlay in the game that tells sure. you like get blah, blah, blah item or do whatever build. Is that is there similar stuff for TF2? Oh, oh, oh yes. Okay. Uh, I had one uh, on mine for a hot hot second called uh it was from mobile mobile analytics mobile analytics or something like that okay all right yeah the chat's rattling off a bunch of names tf i didn't like it seems kind of weird uh companies i'm assuming are cool with that yeah yeah they're it's fine it's not necessarily mobile analytics mobile analytics yeah there's like there's blitz there's professor uh or poor poor professor sorry Uh, you got to keep it on brand um yeah, it's it's not necessarily frowned upon. I think most people have that type of stuff. And I think also in the game, you can even 
uh, make your own builds and save them, Co. At least in League, you can like make a build so it saves in the the overlay stuff. I haven't figured out how to do that in uh, on the PC version, but you can definitely do that uh, on the mobile version. Like, oh. you can put your build in like the build you want to go for. But I haven't figured out how to do that on on PC yet. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not even possible. Like that that the riot la- or the league launcher is fucking archaic and dog shit and you know old as shit and it they it, need to update it's it just man fucking stupid that if you want to play it on pc you have to go through yeah uh the fucking league of legends launcher so i have to like would you like to play league of legends no but you gotta i gotta go there anyway <laughs> so i guess put me in there but yeah. if like you can use the google play store or the apple store like and get the, it's just an app for TFT. You could run uh BlueStacks Zeke, which is an Android emulation that runs on your desktop, and then you would get the TFT mobile client on your desktop if that's better. It's an, an extra Blue step. Stack? Yeah. Uh yeah, I think BlueStacks yeah. is is one of the better well-known ones. I think that's an Android emulator. I don't know what type of phone you have, but yeah. I'll look it up. Yeah. Yeah, I have an Android. Yeah. Anyways, I have a, a or a Pixel Cool. Yeah, I think that should work. Also, if you have Windows 11, uh, you can also just run Android apps on that. I don't know if you've updated. Oh, no. Usually at chat as streamers, we don't upgrade to Windows 11 because that we don't want to break anything. <laughs> Go, you haven't installed Win 11, right? You're still on Win. Nope. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm, nope. I'm Code is still not on Windows 7, dude. <laughs> I'm scared of it, man. XP. Uh, yeah. I use XP for other XP is great. I held on dear life to seven until i had to switch to, to 10 yeah i com- almost completely skipped eight yeah thankfully yeah anyways uh well that's cool i'm glad you're enjoying it we'll, we'll check in over yep. the month of uh december to see see how long you stick around see if you're still super addicted i would like to see zeke at max rank i think that's yeah get hit challenger is challenger max rank and t- like it is in league I know there's plaid and diamond, but is there a challenger? Oh, is that the highest? Oh, there's, there's. I haven't even looked up. I didn't want to see how low I was on the fucking totem pole, but I think it goes. I don't know the. I don't know all the ranks. I, I know. I figured there was a platinum, but I didn't know there was like two higher than that. I think it goes gold, plat, diamond, challenger, and challenger is like the tip top, like the top, the, the fucking insanely hard to get. Uh, iron, bronze, silver, iron. Bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, master, oh, master, grandmaster. Okay, master and grandmaster. I didn't know that. How many challengers mm-hmm. can there be at any given time, chat? Oh God. I I don't think those. There's 200 challengers, so you got to be a top 200 player, Zeke. I believe. Oh, so they that's a, like a constantly rotating thing if people get good. Yeah, right? 200, 200 people per region. I think he could do it. Wow. I think it's possible. Wow. Yeah. Good see. Yeah. Take him out. Okay. Lead those what yordles to success. That's, it's, it's a, yeah. You said it right. Good job. Um, yeah. You, uh, it's, it's just, it's honestly just a matter of keeping up with the meta. It's like, it's like Magic the Gathering a little bit. Yeah. It's like you got to keep up with you got to have luck and you got to play uh the the three team comps that win. You know? And you got to be lucky l- lucky enough to get them. Yeah. You know, cuz there is a there is a modicum of luck in there. But it's like poker. Like, yeah, sure there's luck, but you can hedge your bets to where 75% of the ch- time you're going to win that pot. Yeah, makes sense. Cool stuff. Uh, Co, you've been, you're caught up. You finished all the Final Fantasy, all of it, in like a week, I think. Yeah, Yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Just did the Omega Raids today. Oh, nice. You're going back and doing them. Yeah. That's, uh, those are good. Did you do winning tonight? Whatever that is. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's one of the additional uh, post 80 dungeons or whatever. Uh, One of the best, music wise, at least. Anyways, uh, I think the last time we did a show, you had not started yet, and we had a discussion of, uh, I think you brought it up, or maybe I brought it up, of it being like too hype or overhyped. 
Uh, yes. so I definitely had a fear of, of that going into, like, I, I, I definitely celebrate the game and I've talked about how much I enjoy it, et cetera, but I'm very careful about not overhyping it. Uh, and was worried that it had gotten to that point for you. So now I have yes. not, we've not spoken about it. I've only seen, uh, I think all you said in Slack was 5.3 today, finished 5.3. And that was it. That was all I saw. So all in, how was it? Was it overhyped? You kind of ruined it for me. Yes. That was the goal. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So here's, here's how it was. Um, so Stormblood, Stormblood was, was fun. And I, I enjoyed Stormblood. And, uh, but it was definitely like, it was a slow burn that kind of went into a, a, a finale. And it was good that the finale was there and I enjoyed it and everything was good. Yeah. Um, then I did the patches between Stormblood and Shadowbringers. And it was it was better. Like it was good. I, I I was feeling it going into Shadowbringers. I was like, this is cool. This is cool. Shadowbringers starts. And I was like, oh, this is a direction we're going. Like this right. I this was unexpected. Yeah, I would not have guessed this, which is awesome. Um, I got like the first th- third through Shadowbringers, and I enjoyed it. It was not the best thing I'd ever played. I agree. I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, I, I felt a lot better about the first and second third of Shadowbringers than I did the first and second third of, he- of Stormblood. Like the first and second third of Stormblood felt at times I was just like, there was definitely a couple times in Stormblood when I was like, let's just get through this part. Agreed. <laughs> let's just get through this part. Let's just do this. <laughs> I'm on board so redo. far. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. So the, I will say, that Shadowbringers, unlike Stormblood, got a hook in me early. And that was the Tesslean scene. Yes. Um, when I saw that, I was just like, what the? F-? It sets the stage <laughs> for the expansion. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like okay, this is wild. And I kind of like the Bothry stuff. And, you know, it was, it was, it was all enjoyable. At the beginning, and I, and I talked about this on stream a little bit, at the beginning of the second to last day, I was having a great time and I was really enjoying it. But like I told my chat, I was like, if something doesn't happen, then I feel like I'm going to be one of those people that said, I had a good time, but this was overhyped. Like, like I, I had a good time with it. It was good. I enjoyed it, but this was not the sliced bread thing that I was hoping it to be. Mm -hmm. That was at the beginning of the second to last day. And then by the time I finished 5.0, I was like, holy fuck, this is incredible. Correct. You're on you're correct so far. You've passed the test. And then I got to the end of 5.3. And I I was basically holding back tears for like 30 minutes straight. And then I was really lucky because I got to this point with a character named Seto, and unfortunately my camera malfunctioned. Um, ah yes a, a Every, yeah, it's weird internet. they need to fix the code on they gotta patch that part they really do yeah as, it as happens somebody, to everyone it's weird as somebody tweeted after i posted my five three thing and yes i don't f-bomb often chat but i feel like that deserved it i feel like that was a tactical f-bomb um as as somebody very aptly posted on on the tweet that i said five three was you know something else he says everybody's gangsta until seto closes his eyes <laughs> That's correct. And I completely related to that. Um, but no, I, I was, I was, it, it went from good to amazing to me in the last two days. And it was mainly because it, it made me realize that Stormblood was like a whole lot of okay. And then the last third of the game was very contained and it was good. And, it, and I enjoyed the end of Stormblood. It was good. Where, Shadowbringers, the first two, the first two thirds of the game, like Stormblood, were not hugely engaging. But then when you get to the last third of Shadowbringers, not only is the end incredible, but you realize that the first two thirds were basically just a huge amount of ground. Like exactly, the, the, the yeah. first entire two thirds were lining up dominoes. And then not only did you have like this really cool end part with some incredible scenes some huge revelations about the game, like all this stuff. But then you have like this collapse, this, this second wave washes over the whole thing of everything that had happened, like also crescendoing. And then by the time you get to the end of five, three, you're just like, 
it's like it's like you're standing on a beach and there's just like a tidal wave in front of you. Here we go. Like like when I I when I realized that everyone was going around the world and I was like I was like oh god we're doing a farewell tour aren't we? Yeah. We're we're gonna we're gonna go meet all these people and every one of them is gonna be like super emotional and it's gonna and I was just like I had to be like <sighs> it's yeah <laughs> like I, okay <laughs> it's really interesting. Uh, cause me and Jesse have talked about this a lot on, uh, on the show that we do, cause he experienced it the same way that you experienced it. And that was all at one time. And so when I experienced it, it was with months in between. Yeah. And so mine is kind of the inverse where the end of 5.0 was the emotional moment. And because we had like two and three, uh, well, like three to four months, some, sometimes even longer than that, uh, with some of the patch, uh, cause of COVID, um, like 5.3 hit hard and Seto hit hard, but the end of 5.0 is what really fucked me up. Um, specifically the scene where let's say the ax drops and the music hits like that was yeah. for whatever reason, that was Incredibly the moment emotional. that like, uh, you know, sent me over overboard. Um, Dude, mine was, mine was the, 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 uh, in five O for the heaviest hitting for me it was not only that. And that was just like a swell of emotion, but that little smile. And then that, two those two yes. words from the antagonist i was just like, i say that all crazy the time because <laughs> all of a sudden yeah you know what it's funny because i say that in 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 endwalker i'm trying to i'm trying sage and, and oh, the yeah. big chat thing is great now all your party members can be like emmet that's true and i'm just like assholes um so but no it's it's that that one scene for me like it was and i said this at the end of the thing too um I think Emmett Selk is one of my favorite antagonists in any game. I like said that very game. statement, I think, uh, two years ago on this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, like, even after everything I've ever been through, uh, it, it is, it was, it, his, his writing in the context of the entire Final Fantasy XIV universe is absolutely amazing. Because not only does he, like, personify the entire Asian adventure, but at the same time, he 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 personifies it. He puts a spin on it, and by the time he says those two words, not only are you conflicted, but there's a part of you like rooting for him. Like it's just like, like you're you're so sad to see him go. And it's like this is the this is the biggest of the big bads in a lot of ways. Yeah. And like they 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 not only spin the entire like, it's so good that by the time he's gone, you're questioning everything you've done in previous expansions, where it's just like who who is the real bad guy like like you're 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 in his shoes and you're just like i probably would have done the same thing like it's it's just it was so wild it was so wild to see all that kind of like come together and um yeah yeah the whole experience was amazing i went from 50 to 53 in less did than it pretty quick hours. yeah i did it in less than 24 hours i i finished 50 and in 2 days i was completely finished yeah so for for me, five three hit me like an absolute rock. It, five three was the real ending for me. Like like five five three was my five L. Like that's that's when everything. And I think for it was structurally it is us. in general. It's the end yeah, of Shadow yeah. Warriors. Yeah. Well, I, and I also I think it was a little different for us because like for you five O was the end at the time. Right. Right. But for me, knowing because I I have to it wasn't I wasn't spoiled by it, but I did know at the end of five O that many people had said 5-3 is the real ending. Right. So in my mind, 5-0 didn't have a finality to it. You know, like, like it was amazing. Can you stop saying 5-0 and start saying 5.0 because I keep looking at the door like I'm going to get fucking busted. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm like looking for like someplace to rat hole my stash. Like, <laughs> gotta watch out for the popo. I had to say something. It's been a man. I gotta put some color in there or yeah. else I'm not doing my job. Gotta watch out for the popo. It's like it's like me when we were talking about TFT, um, but yeah. So it was it was it was anyway. TLDR. It was amazing. It, it definitely lives up to the hype. Um, I I was I was going in with hype that it was a good expansion. I was not aware that it was a good culmination to everything Final Fantasy XIV had been to that point. Yeah. The the sheer scope of what Shadowbringers in it is it is a conclusion not only for that expansion. It is a conclusion for everything that's happened in that world up until that point. Yep. So like from from the from the moment I made this character and played days before. It, it's um, why you it can't skip like a realm reborn. 
It's why people yeah. say you can't skip it. A Realm Reborn is is sixty hours of uh, preamble of pre- intro to the the game, and if you don't have that shit, the rest of it just doesn't hit as hard. And even or even, hit at even all. that, even those were dominoes. Even those dominoes yeah. fell down at the end of Shadowburn, like like dominoes from that far back. Um, like even like some of those ancient scenes when they were like going back in time and like hearing about the like La Brea and all that kind of stuff. Like it was it was crazy how much they pulled into that. Um, I will say that I now share the exact same concerns that I was told before Shadowburn. Which was I am legit confused what they're going to do with Endwalker. I feel like like I'm I'm actually legit sitting here like where could they go that's going to be as impactful as what they did in Shadowburn? Because there were but then I mean I'm I'm sure the surprise I'm sure they will but I have to say like it is going to be. It has made me more hyped to see what N- N- Walkers is going to be than than I possibly thought I could be. Like I I forego my whole plan was to slow down and take it easy and finish Shadowbringers a week or two after N- Walker and then go slow there. And now here I am, like, like chomping at the bit to get started with N- Walkers. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to play the main story like all the way. Through. Like I want to know what happens. I want to hear all the music. I want to do the fights. <laughs> like, let's go i am a huge fan of xenos i think he's a hilarious <laughs> i i love i love our new uh oh crazy i can't even remember his name uh he's such a ridiculous it's name. a really it stupid is. name it's fan daniel and, and, yeah fan daniel like yeah. whoever came up with it's that. a real stupid name it's but real. I, I love the character and i and it's honestly like stupid. um very much like yotsuyu like i am extremely interested to, to get to figure out Fan Daniel's path from whatever he was to where he is now. Like, what possibly could have happened to this guy to make him so extra and crazy and want everyone dead? Like, it's yeah. going to be a fun journey to take, for sure. So It will be. Yeah, I just I can't wait, man. I'm excited and can't wait. We'll see if it can... Uh, me and Jesse had a, a very long conversation of, like, the idea of um, the hype leading into it and if it can in any way, like, surpass what Shadowbringers did and in so many ways it can't, but, and maybe story-wise it can, but like Shadowbringers for that game and really the past two years have been uh, like not, not even just for the game, but just for games in general, it has set a bar on like how to recapture an audience yeah. and how to grow a game and how to build a community that there's really no way that like Endwalker could replicate that. And if it does, then that's insanity uh, <laughs> to begin with. Uh, yeah. But from a story perspective, like, the hardest part of telling a good story is sticking the landing. Uh, I've, I've had that shared with me and now I believe it, uh, to be true. And we'll see if they can stick the landing. Uh, I'm curious a a week from now, if we finished it, it might be, uh, long enough to where we, we haven't finished it by next Wednesday or we'll come back on the show and discuss it. We'll see. Uh, but it's the end 6.0 is the end. There's no patches after that. It's the end of a, uh, almost a 10 year arc uh, of that entire game. Well, so we'll see. It, there's no more. There's no more patches pertaining to Asium, right? It's the end of the current storyline. Yeah, we don't there know if more char- patches. There will be more patches. One. Yeah, there there is more yeah. game, but like all the characters that we know now, they might not make it. They might go their own ways. They might not be in the story. That we don't really know what's going to happen. There are so many death flags for so many different characters in those trailers that you have no idea who's yeah. going to live, who's going to die. They've really set it up quite well in that regard. Um, we're going to Thanos the cast and then just go with it. Yeah. And I, I will say this, and this honestly puts me at more risk. If I wouldn't say this, I'm very worried, uh, for people who stream the game. This is very streamer centric worry, very worried for people who stream the game, uh, because there are people that are new to final fantasy that do not give a fuck about the story and will be skipping cutscenes to get to the end of that game and get to the raids faster. I'm really worried for the chat experience. I might actually just play in perma sub mode until it's over. Uh, wow. Cause I, I do not like, I'm so worried that not necessarily the streamers, but bad actors from those channels. Cause there's you know, tens of thousands of viewers. You know what, dude? I don't think you're really going to need to worry about it. Well, now that you said that, I definitely do. So I'm going to go sub. No. Mode. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Because I just got through, I just got through all of the expansions in the last two months. Right. And I I didn't have a single major story element. Soda Pop started never, three days ago, though. 
<laughs> Soda Pop had started playing the game like three or four days ago, though. <laughs> you know, well, I feel I and, and Grant, don't, Grant, don't get me wrong. I know there's a lot of crossover, but it's the kind of thing. And well, hey, none of Soda Pop and people are going to get to it, hopefully. But the, the point is, is that like I, the Final Fantasy 14 community, I think in a lot of ways revels in seeing their streamers, you know, experience oh, 100%. These, these big points. So yeah. I, I would be, I would be very. I'd be very surprised if it like don't get me wrong there may be a few outliers i mean we, we have huge communities it's yes. gonna happen but yeah i don't know if it's the kind of thing where we need to we need to worry too much about it other games are a completely different thing but more really i've been very impressed with the 14 community in terms of of that kind of stuff um, 100 percent. Yeah, I, I agree with that the whole smile thing and stuff like that like i i you know make a smile emote and just anytime, just keep keep it in the side of your eye. Anytime you see that smile emote in your chat, just don't look for a few minutes. I did that for for this, and again, I never had a single major story element, and that was with people like accidentally doing that kind of stuff, you know. I yeah. So, again, my worries are different this time around for multiple reasons. One, chat won't know when to smile. Two, chat will be dead when I stream this game, and three, we'll probably have maybe i'm i'm guessing like eight seven hundred viewers total and not a single one will talk uh so that's a that's a luxury situation uh that i unfortunately don't have so probably emote only the entire is is the the way that we're gonna rock on the channel i'm already warning people like people people have been coming in and being like man co you're gonna stream nwalker day one you're gonna get so many viewers i was like you know i'd be surprised yeah, that's really not how it's going to work. It's going to be the opposite because everyone, everyone who would normally watch us is going to be playing and they all know that we're going to be going through the main story quickly so they don't want to spoil their own playthroughs. So it's like, yeah. I really, really don't think that's how it's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> temper temper expectations. You know, just enjoy your own run. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's the way I'm approaching it as well. So yeah. we'll probably rock mode only mode, but we'll see. Or, or maybe like a follower only mode for like a week or some shit. I don't know. That's the kind of thing that I think would be, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. For but, those of you who are wondering, like, why I'm not talking or whatever, if I look lost, or, I, I played Final Fantasy fourteen up to um, what was before Shadowbringers? Stormblood. Stormblood. That, you Even played till that. Storm. I, you played halfway played, of Stormblood, I think, is what my chat I, said. No, I played all the way up through the most, the the at the time, the story mode, the story of that expansion. Oh, then, or or whatever. No, it wasn't that you played halfway through Stormblood. It's that you were halfway through Stormblood patches. So you're probably like, oh, okay, four point two ish. There you go. There you go. Or four well, point oh ish. Yeah, two hundred plus hours of yeah. Final Fantasy, which is you know rookie fucking numbers. I get it. Yeah, sure, whatever. That game's uh, long, but man. like, I put two hundred hours into it, and I uh, I got to max level. And uh, I got to the, well, you know, I was on my way to finishing the story of the time or of the of the current patch or whatever. And I immediately it was just like, I got to max level and my my heart went, we don't care about this anymore. And I went, really hurt? And then it's like, <laughs> yep. And I walked away. Happens, I walked yeah. away. Like, I didn't even do any, like, max dungeons or what, what are they called? Like, the dungeons. Or Dun- the, the there's raids, raids are- trials. I don't know what word you're looking for. There was like a power word attached to like savage uh, raids. The raid. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I never did any of those expert dungeons. Didn't do any of those. Few do, to be yeah. honest. I, I think those are pretty low percentages. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people are in that situation, Zeke. So you're you're not alone with that. The game now with with Endwalker uh, being put into it is is approaching like three to four hundred hours. Uh, of content to like see through it all if you're if you're sitting there reading everything um verbatim it, it's definitely a lengthy a lengthy session a lengthy playthrough so yeah. yeah that comes out friday we'll be jumping into it uh and hopefully back on this show next week singing its praises uh but we'll see it's gonna be an interesting one that's for sure uh yeah i like like i said earlier and somebody was talking about this in chats just to make sure people know i definitely originally was gonna wait to play Endwalker, but i just got too swept up in the hype like i'm i being able to experience an mmo when it comes out is a very rare thing especially when as big as final fantasy 14 yeah so i just i decided when i whole, when i started the whole road to Endwalker thing when i buckled down and said i'm gonna do my best to catch up like that was the decision i i 
it's been a long time, man. It's been years since I've actually been at the start of these things. And it's honestly, to be blunt, the most fun time in an MMO ever is on release. Yep. That's when everyone's excited. That's when everyone's engaged. You know, you, you can't just go Google everything. Like things are new. Well, and, so. and Final Fantasy is unique in the sense too, because like, I hate bringing up WoW because then it just is going to spark that type of conversation in chat. But World of Warcraft, when expansion comes out, that shit's all been data mined. It's been on the fucking PTR for, you know, months at this point. You know, literally every single thing that's going to be in the expansion. We don't know. We don't know shit. <laughs> Story wise, we don't really know much apart from the new classes that are going to be in there on Friday. There is a tweet uh, from like a, a Japanese publication that had a new mount that showed up last night at like 2 a.m. I woke up and like people were losing their fucking minds over this new Paisa mount uh, that, that is going to be in the game. Uh, so that's like where that hype is at for the game is just also, a small crumble of, of or a small crumb of a mount is people are like, oh, I'm fucking excited. I can't fucking wait. Also for me, uh, after I got the call, especially, and then he like went on and cried about it. Like when Yoshi delayed the game for two weeks <laughs> just so I had a chance to catch up. That's right. I felt kind of obligated. Yeah. You know, like at that point, He's delayed the game, he gave me the time, I took advantage of it, so it's like, yeah. you know, I, I have to play on release. That's true. That's true. Yo, she's, yo, she's a G. He's a real homie. He's a real dude. <laughs> He's a homie. Yeah. I love it. But funny enough, Ko is joking the fact that he got a personal cult. He actually went on air and cried in front of the audience for delaying the game for two weeks. That That is a real thing that the director of the game did. <laughs> uh yeah i am completely wild. kidding about it but to see that amount of passion and it's really interesting also just final final little shout out here um the 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 degree of care and passion that these devs have not only for their community but properly managing expectations communicating actual realistic things that are going to happen like it is it is so refreshing to see a company grab the situation by the reins and be like we're going to do everything we can to control this properly for you guys like, yeah. we're going to put in extra effort we're going to make extra briefs like just today uh they, the patch notes have already come out they released a lengthy thing saying like look there are going to be server delays yep. here's how we addressed it here's what you need to expect it's going to happen we're doing our best but this is the situation like they get they get so far ahead of this stuff that it's 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 again it's just it's such a breath of fresh air instead of being react they're being proactive instead of react and it is so nice yeah so appreciate we didn't we didn't even really discuss that um but the the friday is is an interesting uh situation being that the game over the past two years and really over the past six months has just blown up uh for a myriad of reasons whether it's uh, giant streamers playing it for the first time um, from so many different regions. Uh, COVID also uh, benefiting the game in the sense that a lot of people just jumped in because they were stuck at home. Um, like queue times and server infrastructure is going to, that'll probably be part of the story uh, next week when we're talking about it is like, how long did you sit in queue? Oh, uh, yeah. How All long Friday. was your server offline? Uh, I'm expecting yeah. for Friday. To be in queue most of the time, log in, probably play anywhere from five to thirty minutes, get kicked back into the queue. I think that's that's going to be probably most of the day, Friday and Saturday, if not longer. Knock on wood, and I know it's there's so many different things. Once you usually get into the game, unless they're being DDoS, which I fully think is going to occur, because that happened. Uh, people had DDoSs on the original date that the game was supposed to come out. Uh, <laughs> they DDoS the servers. Once you're in game, it usually goes fine after that. We'll see what happens. Um, there might be a lot of like bad actors at work that just keep the servers down for everyone, but they're usually pretty good about that stuff. As long as you're not living through the storm blood launch co, you're good. Like that, that's, that was a, that was a situation we were, I did a sponsored 24 hour stream for the launch of storm. I remember blood. that. Uh, five hours in there was a queue. I couldn't Blind do gone. anything. Yeah. They were like, go to sleep. Aaron was uh, also streaming at the time. She was one of like three streamers that actually got through the instanced uh, thing and was able wow. just to continue the stream. Um, but everyone else was like stuck in queues. And when I mean everyone, it was like the entirety of the game got stuck at that very, very small point. So they've learned that lesson at least. They, um, they also were very public about the fact uh, that they were like, we would have liked to include more 
servers, more hardware. They just couldn't. But they were not able to secure it because of the the capacitor shortage. Yeah. So it's like that's another thing, or it's it's very much just like not in their hands. They they wanted to do more, but we're not able to. But yeah, we'll see how it goes out. All I know is I'm going in with super low expectation. I'm 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 just gonna take it as it comes and enjoy what I got. And in I'm terms not of server stability in. and stuff. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'll be online. Unfortunately, I'm going in with super high expectations for yeah. Endwalker. <laughs> yeah, I'll be yeah. online at 4 a.m. Uh, Eastern on Friday morning. We'll see what happens. Uh, I would honestly call. I would actually, unless you have someone, they said that they're going to kick people off after 30 minutes. I was going to say you should wake oh, up I'm, at 3 a.m. I'm clicking play. I'm clicking play at 8. Yeah, I, I'm just going to ride it. I've decided. I, I was thinking about doing the 4 a.m. thing, but it's just like, I, got, I do actually have a, a large portion of, that are playing Final Fantasy 14 with me that for various reasons cannot play themselves. Mm. So I didn't I didn't want them to have to get up at four. Well, I was just like, saying wake up at four and log in and then stay logged in to bypass all the key stuff. But you got Yeah, you know, maybe maybe I'll try a little bit early. We'll see. Yeah, you gotta I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. They did say they're gonna be aggressive with the AFK stuff. So. Yeah, 30 minute logouts yeah. is what it is. So yeah. if you're not doing something for 30 minutes, they'll they'll kick you. And they were pretty, they left that on for a while uh, at like Shadowbringers launch. So it was, it was generally fine. And hopefully they've got enough like DDoS prevention shit in the works that will just, if they pull it off, if they pull off a launch without any issues and the story is good, that's going to be wild. That'll be a, especially given the state of, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Especially given the state of like internet and how game coverage is these days. That'll be wild. Yeah, there's there's staff and employees in my chat. They're like, shut the fuck up, JP. <laughs> for, for me, that. for me, it's not. It's like I'm much more about accepting that stuff's going to happen. I'm much more about how they're going to react to it. Mm. Like shit's going to break. Yeah. It's not going to work. I'm not worried about that. How are they going to react to it? Like, are are we going to like that's that's what I that's what I'm most interested in. If, and if they because you can, you can't not these days. Like the way the way just the metrics behind the way MMOs releases work. It's just, it's almost impossible to deal with. Yeah. Um. So, you know, like, yeah. Hey, Shadowbringers was literally a flawless launch. So. Yeah, was it? Yeah. They had they had one DDoS uh, situation that went down on the first day. And I think apart from that, it was flawless. So it was on her. It was part of the reason I sang its praises so much two years ago. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. That's that. Okay. Uh, we still have some trailers to watch. I don't have to spend too long on it, uh, but I did play Resident Evil 7 VR finally. Uh, oh, man. Is it better on PS5? No, it. there are no changes to it. It loads the same that it did on the PS4. They didn't do... The only reason that I'm playing PS5 is because I didn't want to also have a PS4 set up on my desk. And so that I had to order really unfortunate to hear. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. I had to order like the little adapter, um, which is literally just a USB, some USB 1.0 version to a USB like C adapter. And that's it. I'm probably looking back on it with rose tinted glasses. Is, is there like loading? Like, does it take a long time to load? I don't, first know. Load I don't remember. Is, first like, load takes a while. Yeah. Once you're in game, it loads fine. Okay. Um, but I was hoping it would be like it was still. I mean, you it, it it was hard going from Resident Evil Seven to like an actual index game. Like it it right. it really is just night and day in terms of. And granted, there's it's it would still be restricted by the PSVR and its screen and everything. I was still kind of hoping that they would give it like a, a thorough next gen, at least running better update kind of thing. But yeah, I, I wish yeah. they did. I mean, it, I'm. It, it, to say I'm enjoying it is not necessarily a proper <laughs> way of talking about that, but it played and ran fine. I did have a moment, uh, the game's old enough. When you're in the uh, the garage for the first time and the dad is there and you, he like chases you around, you have to get into the car and drive it and run him over or whatever. I like finished that scene. I was like, this is pretty sick. Like I'm enjoying this a lot. And then the next like moment is when the grandma's at the top of the stairs just sitting in a chair staring at you as you walk around the room hated that then you go and put a tape into a tv and like she's the mom is chasing you around a room when you're playing as mia and then the lights go out when you're underneath the fucking thing man fuck that game <laughs> Dude, why why in the fuck are you playing it uh so we started doing reward, a thing right? do what 
We did like a challenge or a. Or well, no, a we we started doing a thing on the channel called Cold Community Day, which is the final day of every month. And I told people, look, uh, we'll do an hour of this game once a month because that's all I can do. Like that's legitimately all I can do. And people are like, okay. So I played the first time, or really it was, I'm going to play for the first community day. I'll play an hour of this game. I'm not promising anymore. I finished it that hour and I was like, okay, maybe we'll do this once, once a month. So I did it again yesterday uh, for the second hour. And I'm like, it's going to take me fucking months to finish this game. Um, but there's legitimately, I don't, do you guys remember the game that well? Like, do you remember when you walk out of one of the save rooms and the cop is very early on in the game is in a window at the end of the yeah. hall in the garage? Yeah. Right before you go to the garage. Yeah. So I walked out of that, that room and I'm looking around and I didn't, he wasn't there yet. I didn't, uh, I think I didn't answer the phone or something like that, whatever triggers him. So I walked around that entire area and I like had this like uh heart, this like safety, this feeling of safeness. Right. Where I was like, okay, I can, like, uh, I can run around this area and get all the loot, see whatever I'm good. Go back in, yeah. answer the phone. Uh, I think Mia calls you or something like that. You walk out the door and I like look to the right. And at the end of that hallway is the figure in the window, but you can't really make it out what it is. And I had like that dead, like the type of fear where your chest hurts <laughs> and you don't move and you're just like, oh, what's a cop? <laughs> And I like walk over and I'm like, you're not going to make it very far in this game. I know how this shit goes, but I'm glad to see you. Like, it's fucking terrifying for me, man. It It is not, uh, I'm in, I'm enjoying playing it after the fact, but in the moment it's fucking terrifying. It is legitimately just awful. There's an actual, there's a word that I use that, uh, I got from, you ever, did you ever read Watership Down in high school or anything? I'm sure I, yeah, I read the cliff notes probably. <laughs> there, there was a, a word they use called tharn, okay. T-H-A-R-N, which meant, which means that like, like a deer in the headlights fear, just like, <gasps> yes. And it just stops you dead in your track. That's yes. I understand why you don't play horror games if that happens to you. Yes. Like, <laughs> wow. That like that is okay. Yeah. Well, and the worst part too is, <laughs> is my, uh, my brain is, is scarier than the actual game is. Cause I go like, well, if I was playing, I would put a fucking scary creature right here. And then I've gotten pretty good at like calling all the scary stuff, uh, right before it happens. So that softens the blow. But like when you were, uh, when you play as Mia in that video in the first videotape and you're underneath the, the floorboard or whatever, and you get to the thing and then the, the little shoot door closes right in front of you. And you're like, fuck, you walk forward and you read a thing and then the lights all go out. I was just like, I'm closing my eyes. I know that it's about to jump out at me. I'm just going to wait for the sound cue. There it is. Okay, let's open my eyes and see the fucking creature. Yeah. I've had to do that in the VR before. It's terrifying, dude. When you, when you can't turn away. Yeah, that's why, to, that's that's why VR like, sucks or is good in horror. Because you can't turn away. But no one can see you away. closing your eyes. It's fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you're like screaming it. No one can see you closing your eyes. It's great. Yeah. Uh, you just reminded me, though, like of a, a game that I uh, just played like the first there's only one chapter released but uh uh it's called poppy playtime or pop is it poppy yeah or poppy? i played that is poppy's, it a horror uh, game poppy's playtime yeah it is poppy just no no possessive poppy playtime um and it's just like a, a short experience right now because it's only it's an episodic release is what i'm gathering but it was there was there was a couple of parts in that that were very well done Huh. Very tense and, and frightening. Did uh very sweaty, like oh, oh god. I uh my mods are telling me I watched a trailer of that during trailer time, so I I must have blocked it out of my memory because it was fucking terrifying. There are a few scenes of of let's let's just go ahead and call it poppy. There's a few scenes of poppy moving that were some of the more like have stuck with me since than in any horror game. Really? Like this, oh yeah, dude. Have like, you the way um, that they do that? Oh. Have either of you played the Mortuary's Assistant? No, actually. So that I've watched, uh, I watched Lyric play that, and I also watched Dan play that. That game, it's a demo. Funny enough, the, it's made by like only a handful of devs. It's a demo. It is fucking terrifying. Yeah. And it's the type of scary that you actually don't know. If you're not paying attention, you don't see shit, 
And it's it's what Zeke t- uh, was describing from Watership Down. The there's moments watching Dan where that he's deer in headlights, like oh my fucking god, that thing's right there, and I didn't see it. Like that's been on the screen this entire time. I just didn't look up in the top left hand corner to see this guy perched on a fucking wall staring at me. And it like it's 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 woof. It's real. You bad. Remember, uh, it's real. Terrible. I don't know if you guys ever went to the site. Like, I think it was called sh- Shit Bricks with an X. <laughs> Shitbricks.com. <laughs> the jump scares. Stuff. It was well. It wasn't. It's not jump scares. It's when you see it. The whole lot, tagline is when you see it, you'll shit bricks. Yeah. And it's like a lot of still images, and you're like, "One, I'm wondering what I'm supposed to." And then you see like one little part, and you're like, "Oh God!" Yeah. Like it just like jumps out and like. Like, uh, uh, one of them was, uh, you're looking at this, like, old, I was looking at this old cabin, I'm like, what am I, what am I supposed to see? And then, like, just right under the, like, the, the, the three steps of the wooden stairs, like, leading up to the porch, or leading up to the cabin door, you see, like, Whew. eyes, like, peeking out. Yeah, man. And it, it chilling, chilling, like, that kind of shit. I love that kind of shit. So if it's like that, what mortuary assistance? That which, what yeah, that the mortuary assistant. I'm gonna show you uh if I can find the clip. I'll just show you this clip real quick. Wait, was that it? Yes, here it is. Uh does it still work? Yes. Okay, so this is uh the clip. I'm not gonna we're not gonna pause. Oh, I have it on my wish list. I'm not gonna pause anything. Also Oh, I've seen this. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, one. this was on uh, this is from the clip show we did. It was on uh Game Stream Fells. I'm not gonna say anything, Zeke. Feel free to watch the clip. It's not spoiler. This won't spoil the game for you. Okay. Okay. In fact, I wouldn't even say it's scary at this yeah. point. I'm not going to play audio or anything. But it's a good example. Yeah. Just, he didn't see it. <laughs> He's just in a room draining a, a cadaver. I saw that. Yeah. Dan freaked the fuck out. <laughs> so I lo- I so, played a game recently that had a lot of that. I can't remember what it was. Look at it this. It had like look right ton there. Of, yeah, I know. It had a ton of subtle shit like that. Look that at they that. don't draw they don't draw your eye to. Yeah. He's just he's know, just fucking, that and Dan now. doesn't even notice it because he's staring at the fucking body. There's another moment where he's like perched up on the wall, I think. Yeah. Maybe like right when he gets over to the other side. It, it's that type of shit which makes this game like right there. <laughs> He's just staring at you, man. But, oh, God. Yeah. Apparently, that's a demo uh, for a full game coming out. So, And that's uh, that's called the Mortuary Assistant for any sickos out there that want to play. <laughs> no, I have it on my wish list. Okay. Uh, waiting for it to, for the full release to come out or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I it's got, my, got my eye on it. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll we'll do. We're playing again on December 31st, the, the next hour. I think the next hour is where did i save it was like right after the mia tape so i think the i think i'm going to start going through the like the tight wall spaces with i remember bugs from when you guys played it years ago oh so, yeah listen like there's not a lot of shit that like will in a video game that will make me have an involuntary reaction like yeah. other than of course jump scares jump scares are easy but yeah that Resident Evil Seven with their swarms of things. That's where I. That's where I got like, I don't like. It's not a bug that I'm scared. I like like lots it's of swarms bugs, maybe. of bugs. It's like I have a fear of like a, a cockroach. Fine. Swarms of things. Mm-mm. That is that is my runaway instant cold sweat. And when you have to do that, like, yeah, I remember like that very Jones, visibly from your like, playthrough, shit. from Ugh. both of y'all's playthrough. So that's, I think that's where I'm headed next. I don't know. I, everyone in the chat was like, oh, the first hour is the scariest part. So then I started yesterday and I was like, all right, it's not. Oh my God. <laughs> it was not. It gets worse. It's so much worse later on in the game. Uh, yeah. Talking about breaking into a cold sweat that I can only do like four hours of a stream when it includes that. I don't know how you guys did like, seven and eight hour streams of that game that's fucking bananas to me that you were just lost in that world for that long i don't know if i did a full like seven or eight like being in vr is taxing. it's tiring yeah yeah i think it, like maybe five six like at max like 
I don't know. That was I the only I game I got actually like motion sick into. Really? I had like I had it. I had it on the movement where it didn't do it like in pie slices where it was continuous. Yeah, that's what and, I'm on. And uh, and after like four hours, like I started feeling a little bit lightheaded. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then like five minutes later, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Like that was not connecting, and it flipped a switch up there. And yeah, I went back to the mm. pie slice. It was fine though for the rest of the run. Really enough. I think I'm just on default, so I think it's just. I think I'm just spinning around a continuous. So I don't, to be honest though, I don't spend long enough in a room. <laughs> that game, that game's very much poked my head in. I see a door right there. I'm going to go to that door. And I shuffle over, press X, get inside the door. All right. This seems safe enough. <laughs> and then I do the like, Chad, is everything good? Can you guys see? Is it all good? Are we good? There's a lot of stalling when I'm playing in that game. A lot of stalling. It'll be a long playthrough. Yeah. Anyways. I do that a lot in, in those horror games. I look down a hallway and like, not yet. <laughs> Turn around and like go, go explore every other place and like, they're going to make me go down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. When you enter in rooms, it's like, I have to go in there. Without question, I have to go in there. Uh, What else? Oh, I played uh, Rune. I played and finished Rune King. And Co, I know you started Rune King, but then Final Fantasy entered the equation. Uh, I wonder how how is that? So Rune King is a very it's a it's a very good game, but it has bugs, uh, and and some of them are fine. Some of them are like none of them are actually game breaking. I guess there was one soft lock that happened towards the very end of the game where a cutscene just like a character just didn't walk forward and I had to restart like three or four times. Um, but they've been pretty adamant in terms of patching that stuff. Um, I've, I downloaded like five or six patches over the 30 hours it took to finish it. Um, it's very long game. Yeah. Very long game. And that's only with probably maybe 40% of the side quest stuff. I didn't get any of the legend. I I got one legendary weapon uh, out of six. Did you, also bump up the difficulty yes so i was on the hardest difficulty after the first probably two to three hours and then the final two to three hours i bumped the difficulty down um because the end of that game definitely expects you to have I've done everything done everything yeah it expects you to have gone and found legendary weapons which are quests it expects you to have finished the bounty board i was level 29 max levels 30 um, but to put it in perspective, like a legendary weapon compared to a level 29 weapon is like a thousand attack power difference. Like it's massive. Um, and so the final boss on hardest difficulty, I think had like 130 or 140,000 HP. Um, and on one bump down, it had 110, uh, is, is what I beat it on. And he was still fucking one shotting me on a lot of the characters <laughs> like he's not uh he has some issues uh in terms of how hard he hits on that but through and through it's a fantastic rpg um if you're really wanting to know more about a different part of rune terra uh, if you watched arcane for example this is uh bilgewater which is kind of like the pirate world of uh of rune terra um and it's got some ionian which is like uh i think the asia of rune terra uh, Yasuo's in it, uh, Ari's in it, if you know these names, Misfortune's in it, and a handful of other characters, which I won't necessarily um, reveal, uh, apart from Alawi, who's also kind of like a main character. Um, yeah, I'll pull up some gameplay of it, but it it's uh, it, it was fantastic. I, I very rarely will spend 30 hours in a game, um, and usually that's a sign of it being enjoyable, and I enjoyed the shit out of this. It was, it was very good. Uh, the combat is also what kept me around. Um, it's turn-based RPG combat, but it's also, they like, if you if you played Battle Chasers, first off, this is from the Battle yeah. Chasers devs. That's a great way to intro This is it. Battle Chasers 2. The Battle yeah. Chasers 2 that Ryan bought. <laughs> yes. A lot of people <laughs> yeah. would join the stream and be like, oh, this is just Battle Chasers with the League of Legends skin. And like, while that sounds very uh, negative, they're not wrong. <laughs> Dude, I love Battle Chasers. I was looking forward to two. I did everything there was. Like, I the Battle Chasers was great. It was a lot of fun. So and it, it really and it really fits in the League of Legends world. Like, I had a great time with Rune King. Yeah. Did you? So you did not finish it, right? 
Oh no, I, okay. I think I did a stream of it. Maybe two. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't do a lot of it. I really enjoyed what I played though. I mean, okay. it was it was cool. Lot lots of side content. It was gorgeous. I loved the voice acting. The combat was cool. Like, I thought it was very creative how they they integrated like the lane stuff and everything. Like, it was it, it's a very cool game. Yeah, cool game. It, they they I, know I what they're doing. Really like how Riot is not only expanding into different mediums with their IP, but they're actually doing it pretty freaking tastefully, which is awesome. They're not just like shotgunning it like the warhammer ip and you know like churning out a bunch of stuff God, that they that's hope a people great, like yeah like they're actually making quality products in different genres and realms and that's super cool so in, in so many ways doing, trailer time the show where i watch trailers almost every single day of the stream literally lives because of the warhammer ip because there's so many fucking games that they're shipping that out that are maybe one of them and like 200 is actually good uh but there's a new warhammer trailer for a new game almost every single day um but yeah it's fantastic zeke i know you had questions about it if you you, you were wondering if uh if i enjoyed it i definitely recommend this to anyone that is interested in uh the league of legends lore wants more of that world it has a ton of backstory for all these characters um and it's also like and it's all canon so canon is a weird word uh to riot uh i don't know if right, they, sure. like i don't know if they've canonized this yet i want to say it's all yeah. canon uh but some of these stories the are not necessarily like canon but they are i i feel like they, they've got to, it's got to be some kind of canon because it feels like the whole reason they're doing like the show and these games and stuff like that is to develop their universe yeah so it would be really strange if this stuff was like all one-off stuff that wasn't canon because at that point like some of it would have to be right if they ever had like a subsequent thing it so if they made like a whole bunch of different histories for different characters and you never know which one is right like, that seems like a terrible idea yeah it does you know? uh that's that's riot for the past three years <laughs> they have well, they have messed with a lot of canica or canonical stuff uh over the past yeah. couple of years and uh, you're right in the in the sense that Arcane is them starting to hopefully go down that path of like canonizing everything and keep it uh, canonical, yeah. making making an actual universe instead of just a bunch of themed characters for a, a you know a MOBA essentially, which is right. where it started. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's all from from my perspective. It's them doing things like this, doing things like Arcane, building out that IP in that world because it's all leading up to their MMO. Right. That's, yeah, that's, that's where exactly. This is all, I was, I'm hoping that a lot of this is laying the foundation for the MMO. I am super interested in the MMO. I am you and me so, both. <laughs> I'm so hoping that they're not just going to try to pull a reskin WoW kind of situation, and that they're actually going to like bring something interesting and 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 super cool to the genre. Yeah. But even if they just reskin WoW, I mean, it 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 would still be a lot of fun. But I I'm hoping they do something kind of genre forward pushing. Yeah. It's I don't know if you've noticed it, it's somewhat of a tangent, but uh, there's a lot of MMOs being made right now and not just like crowdfunded MMOs, like Marvel announced they're doing an MMO made from the company, uh, the city of heroes and city of villains devs and DC universe devs, I think. Yeah. I was going to say DC universe, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like people are kind of getting back into MMOs, uh, which is really w wild to see. I think they've realized that it's really fucking hard to make a game as a service when you can just go back to the original. That's an MMO. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a game with a service without calling it that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think this is all leading to that. But uh, yeah. yeah, Zeke, I think it's great. I, it's fantastic. You you very quickly like none of the characters are bad in terms of their design. Uh, they're all very strong in their perspective um, roles, and you can also like uh, change a character's role because of the way that the game builds them out so there's a root there's multiple systems there's a you get abilities right you have three abilities that cost no resources you eventually get six abilities that cost resources but the way that they work mana in this game uh, which i thought is a very clever way of, of managing this and i co you'll have to tell me if this was in battle chasers or not when you attack you basically get 10 free mana for that fight so then you can use an ability rather than having to worry about hoarding mana on that character. And so some most abilities cost like 20 mana. So you attack twice, then you can cast an ability and you won't be penalized for using mana in that fight. It'll just use the overcharge. 
essentially. Um, yeah. And so it makes it so you don't get in situations where you're like, well, I'm just going to like melee all these guys so I can save mana for a fight because I didn't bring enough mana pots into this dungeon, blah, 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 blah. And so it's really clever how they handle that. Um, and I think it's a fantastic system because there's also ways where it's like, if you take damage on, uh, this character's name is Alawi. She's a tank. Uh, she eventually gets a way to, if you take damage, you will build overcharge every time you take damage. And so then you just have like unlimited mana, for instance, on that character where you don't have to worry then about you get mana synergies, pots. Like you put that with the fact that you can taunt. Like yep. I used the big guy with the shield as my tank. So you Brom, know, he, would, yeah. he would gain overcharge on taunt. First thing I would do is taunt at the beginning of the fight, let that build up, start buffing and getting overcharged. With my other guys. Like lots of different ways to play, which is really cool. I actually think you'd really like this game, Zeke, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's definitely a lot of fun. Also, to go back to your original question about battle changers, our battle chasers. Uh, the overcharge mechanic definitely is not, not that I remember at all. I okay. completely forgot. Chat actually told me that, uh, yeah, it looks like an overcharge style mechanic was also battle. Cool. Cool. Yeah, it's it's smart. I'm, I'm I don't glad think they, they did anything over. with the lane stuff, though. The lane stuff is new. Yeah, so you yeah, can I'm also sure seek. Uh, new. When you use, like, a, an ability that costs mana, you can put mm -hmm. it into a speed, a balanced, or you see at the bottom of the screen right there? The speed is the top yep. lane. Balance is where all of it uh, goes in the center. And then bottom is power. And so depending mm. on which lane you put it in, it'll either do less, the same, or more damage. And depending on how you have that ability specced via another system in the game, it'll do certain things. Uh, and so I had one character, or uh, the character here in the center, her AoE heal, mm. if you use that in the speed lane, then it will also cleanse all of the targets that it heals but only if you use it in the speed lane. So it'll heal for less, but it'll also cleanse and get rid of debuffs on the characters. Um, and so you make little decisions like that as well. And on top of that, yeah. not only <clears throat> does speed and power affect uh, or, or have little passes on it, but it also actually speeds up the skill or uses more power. If you look in the bottom of the screen, every time you do an action, it, it takes a certain amount of time before it fires. Right. And that's like a different mechanic in the game. Not only is it turn-based, but then you're also trying to balance speed and power with getting in before enemy attacks. There's also like, you can see that green square down there. If you can land in the square, you'll get a buff. So sometimes even if you don't need the power attack, it might be advantageous just to slow it down a little bit, make it go further on the timeline. So you get like a buff or more importantly, avoid a buff. Some of those you want to make sure you're not in like poison gas and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's a very cool little element that kind of adds even more strategy on top. Yeah. And bosses start introducing things where it's like, if you're in this, you die. So <laughs> you need to go to oh, the, the other lanes uh, <laughs> type situations. Uh, or uh, you only can deal damage to the boss if you're in this lane type situation. Um, and there's little, like, you have to read about all that type of stuff. Um, like for this, I, I think in the top right, uh, it says a speed lane attack will disarm the bomb on death this mob will deal heavy damage to all champions. So you have to kill it with the speed lane attack or else you're just going to take a shit ton of damage and have to heal afterwards. Um, so they do a lot of that type of stuff. I, I had a great time with it. It's 30 bucks. I think on any given, on a normal playthrough, it took me about 31 hours. If you do everything in the game, I've heard it takes upwards of around 40. So uh, the price is great uh, for that amount of content. Um, and the stories, you know, it's, it's not uh, on the level of arcane uh or anything like that but it's not bad right it's completely serviceable um especially if you don't know the characters because you get to learn their backstory um there are some like and it's, all voice. And it's all voiced it's voiced by like the critical role cast it's in this game mercer laura bailey liam they're all in there they all play main characters uh, as well as other uh fantastic voice actors well i was guy yeah, i was all for it <laughs> but not no more Mercer actually has two roles in this and game. And do it. So I would say. Oh, I really? Do Only it. two this time? Yeah. Only two. No, I would okay. say don't do it. I would say don't do it. <laughs> uh, Mercer does play the villain or a villain. Funny enough. So I don't know if that helps. He's always a villain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, boy. But no, speaking of uh, like League of Legends stuff, um, there, uh, I. First thing I opened up today when I opened up the uh, the server or the whatever the launch launcher, oh, it yeah. says that Sil Silco is coming to TFT. Yeah, Silco from Arcane is coming to TFT. Is he is is Silco in the 
League of Legends. Not. <coughs> TFT is getting the you first. You introduced in Arcane. Yes, brand new character introduced in Arcane. Awesome. Yeah, he's going to TFT. Very cool. Yeah, yeah the, so I think they coming. said uh, they've already said what role the next league character that they're they're introducing is, but I don't know if they've announced the name. So it it could be Silco in that role. I want to say it was a an AD character, but I'm not. I, I shouldn't speak uh, without <laughs> knowing it for sure. Um, Chat saying a jungler from the void is who the new character is. So I don't know. We will see. Hey, I really want to watch the Starfield trailer, and I'm not doing a trailer time today. Do you guys want to watch a seven minute Starfield trailer? Do it. Sure. Well, do I don't it. know what the hell's in this, but it's seven minutes of Starfield, and I think they're showing this because they're going to show gameplay at the game awards. I bet you that's what happened. Really? I, that's my hypothesis. I don't really have any actual information on that, but I'd be cool. uh, curious to see it. Let me uh, give you guys some audio here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Why are you so tiny? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you just... <laughs> Zoom. Bye. Oh, my you God. Later, buddy. Because you're in the group, the mouse is... OBS doesn't handle this very well. I I'll just get to the this in just a second. Grab and jump. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here's the trailer. I think there's a lot of... Uh... World premiere. Thank you. I think the one thing people underestimate about video games oh, well. is that people think it's just playtime. But I always say that the one thing video games can give you that nothing else in entertainment can is that feeling of pride. Right, look what I chat. did. And even though we want to make a game that is very big and is very long, you can play for all of those years, it's all the paths you didn't take that we make it special you to you, <laughs> that you feel like when you finish that quest, that you feel that you accomplished something that week. The people who love video games can always say like, you know, what'd you do today? I saved the world. What? Oh, Todd. Todd, 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 There we go. I don't want to block subtitles. We've been incredibly lucky to work with such a tight group of people for so long. Like, we're all friends. It's like a second family in a way. We all sort of know or get what a Bethesda game is. No, we're not Bethesda actually upside who's down. Who's been working together for decades <laughs> and knows how to make a BGS game. And then there's this you know, new generation of game developers who are coming in and working at BGS who grew up on those games those people made. For some people, those are the games that got them to go into the industry in the first place. And what- I'm gonna pause. Would we interview Todd Howard if he wanted to come on the show? Would would we be like, Co, would you? I would love to interview him. I just don't know if Co could <laughs> like not. I mean, like, how would that go? Would you guys be interested in that? Here's the thing. Dude, fuck I, yeah. I would be fine with it. Like, I think it'd be fine. But, I mean, it's just, like, he's he's the face of Bethesda. Yeah. So, it would, it would like, we would probably get a list a mile long of things we couldn't have or talk about. Well, dude, we like, had Phil would, on the show, man. I mean. Yeah. We didn't get a list of things we couldn't ask there. Man. Phil and Todd are two different things. They are I mean, two I, different things. No, but there wasn't, like, a position of power, right? About, really. Yeah. I just wouldn't want to see it turn into like a commercial. You know what I mean? Like that would be my biggest concern. Like if if we if I would want to see the list of what we can't talk about and 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 see if it would turn too much into a commercial. It's true. I mean, he really has become a marketeer. Let's be real. Like he true. he is he is a marketing guy. Like so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not saying that's possible, chat. I'm just I was just curious. Oh, of course, no, 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 no. Yeah. We're, we're just we're just talking. What I love about that is those people come in. I'd love in to, though. For the record, for the record, most likely they love I would the love worlds it. too, yeah. and they want to stay true to those worlds that they grew up on. And so we're still able to maintain what a BGS game is, but continue to evolve. I think we underestimate how long people are going to play it. You look at Skyrim. We're sitting here ten years later, and it keeps having this life. And it changes how you want to create something. That still yeah, blows like my mind. Sort of have still play two Skyrim. lives, right? Like we create this game, and we put everything we can possibly put into it, and tell the stories we want to tell, and build this world that's sort of a setup. That when 
We hand it off to the players, they play it, but then they take it and make it their own. They tell their own stories and then they make their own stories with our tools. I think it's the hallmark of our games that, you know, you play it and my experience is going to be different than yours. I'm gonna come in and tell you a funny story about something that happened to me. You may never have seen that because it's just a confluence of events. And I think that helps with the longevity and it helps with that feeling of community in a lot of ways. It is a world that you get transported to that you can really make your own. And that's where, Starfield, you right? know, for me, the magic yeah, is, yeah, uh, you know, to uh, do it yeah. for <laughs> two decades and close to that. The same question. So much of our group, there's a big trust there. I mean, it's called that uh, we know how we solve into the star things field. together. We were doing Morrowind. Almost halfway and through it. And what we might do after that and beyond That's that. That's why I we, think we they're ramping up of, the marketing what are the to see other types gameplay of worlds next we want to go to. And obviously Fallout was at the top of the list, you know, if we could if we could do that and that, you know, magically luckily came true for us. And right behind that was, you know, science fiction. Oh, here we go. Going to space I think there's a magic in just Defying gravity and taking off from a planet. Like that's, it's extremely difficult human endeavor. Yeah, a lot of our games are about exploration and that's sort of like, that's the ultimate exploration is what's, what's out there, what's past Earth, right? So it's incredibly exciting for us to work on something like that. I feel like every time we come to a game, we're starting fresh. We're saying, okay, we just did that one, that's over. How do we make it better in every way? It's got a more realistic- 76 science-based backing to it, whereas Skyrim is sort of a, you know, an epic fantasy. This is a more grounded uh, game and a grounded setting about exploration. So I think that gives us a different take on how we make everything. So that's sort of the thing you latch onto when we're, we're making new areas, making environments, making characters. The mechanics of the world are entirely different, but there are similarities. And I think those, you know, those are things we like, like we like, playing first person. We like having all the coffee cups. We like being able to touch everything. Those moments make, make the whole thing believable. Being able to watch the sunset and nighttime come and just sit there and watch the world go by seems like it's not gameplay, but it is vital to how you feel through the rest of it. I also think that because it's based in a more that. realistic yeah. atmosphere is like, you, know, you have a lot of people on our team who are super into certain things like robotics Ooh, or robot. you know, engineering, and, and they can use this lifetime of knowledge they have gathered and then use it in their work. Everyone comes from you know, these different areas and brings stuff to the game that can make it in. And it all, it all matters, you know, from the rocks to the, the clutter to you know, what the spacesuits look like. It's, you know, based on people's experience and sort of learning about how things work in the world and trying to apply it in a way that's believable for this universe. Yeah, it starts feeling so real to us. Like all you're saying, we do all that stuff, but then concepting like everything they eat or the toys the children play with or what are their bedtime stories? What is their art? What is their history? What is their entertainment? It is a universe, not just a game. There has to be an emotional trigger that occurs. And I think as time has gone on, we're able to paint an even better picture that triggers that emotional thing. We always have that step out moment into the world, so to say. The technology's changed, we've all changed. So our expectations when loading up a game, like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out and there's gonna be this moment. Us being able to do that and have it feel new every generation, every game is something that is really special about what we do. I like to say that Starfield has two step out moments. It's cryptic. Our process <laughs> of okay. making it is, is a journey for us that is very, very rewarding. And coming to Starfield, everybody starting over and saying, what would you wanna do? What does going to space mean to you? And everybody comes back to the same one. I want to see what's out there. But we can't start well, our journey today. Not today, know? but yeah, well, it should have been in quotes. Start your journey today. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So I think if you look at, do they have a grand shot of this? 
I think you don't make this set unless they're going to use it again. So I think we're going to see more oh, I oh, yeah. trailers soon from this, especially if this game's going to ship next year. Right? Like, this game's coming out next year. I think that's confirmed. So I think it's going to be there uh, at uh, the Game Awards. Also, didn't they... Was Starfield, like, quote, shown for the first time last E3? Is that right? At their conference? Or was that at the Xbox conference? That was at the Xbox remember. conference, yeah. if I recall correctly. Yeah. yeah. Like, last year, they made a huge hubbub yeah. about it, so. Yeah. Xbox. We'll see. We'll see if it's there next I year. have to admit, like, I, there, it's, first of all, that was very... That was very uh, self self appreciating. There's a lot yes. of uh, a lot of a lot of uh, horn horn self horn tooting. Yes, that was going on there, which is I mean you know it's okay. Um, they were smelling their own fart. There was a bit. <laughs> yeah. There was a bit. And Todd of, had some beans before that. <laughs> gaseous inhalation. Absolutely. Um, I I will say that there there, there was a lot of very lofty stuff said, like like very kind of high level stuff. But I do have to admit, like, a lot of the things they were saying at core, I do agree, are what separate a really good gaming experience from just another RPG. Like, like that, that, is, that is kind of encouraging to hear if they really are going at it with that perspective. The whole, like, putting yourself in your character's shoes, you know, experiencing the world how they would with their art and everything. Like, what the bedtime stories would they tell? Also, I really like what he said about how, like, sometimes gameplay for some people is just existing in the world. Right. Because I absolutely agree with that. Like sometimes just running around the world and experiencing it is the best parts of games like that. Um, so you know, I mean, that's that's all good and the pictures are pretty. Um, I, I have to say that everything I've seen from it, like none of it looks game brio, which is really weird. Like I'm very I'm really wondering what this game's gonna look like. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, like, you know, it 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 very clearly is is marketing directed, but yeah. Yeah, I'm. I, I. It's. It's that situation where it's like I want to be excited for it. You know, I want to be excited for it, but at the same time, there's a part of me that's just like, <laughs> you know better. <laughs> you heard <laughs> me like, seventy six well, times yeah, in the past, that, and I can't do this to Todd's one. sweet lies. What you know? What, what, like, I, was it seventy six that that made you think you you know better? Was that the the one? Yeah, that, or was I it mean, Fallout I mean, not, Four? Not, was it was it more of that? Like what? not it's 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 just a combination it's it's the it's the most recent like Thing. fallout yeah. 4 you know F fallout fallout 4 made some some really unfortunate design decisions that kind of affected it 76 was an absolute mess and what's even more concerning about 76 is in my opinion the stuff that saved 76 goes completely against what they said the game was being made for at the beginning i remember when they first released 76 and they were like we're never going to put NPCs because we want the player to create this story and blah, blah. And it just didn't work. Yeah. It, it didn't work so hard that they then made a huge point of adding them in later. And it's just like, that's eh, a little concerning. That's a little, that's a little, you know, like this is like, the thing that made it work is basically the opposite of what you were trying to do. Okay. Like that's a little worrying. Um, and then it took them, you know, a year and a half to actually make the game like presentable playable thank i you said it i didn't yeah but anyway it's you know i don't want to play i don't have my disclaimer handy um <laughs> but yeah it's the kind of it's it's um i just i i again i want to be on board with this i want i want a big open world delicious deep rpg i'm just there's so many there's red there's just flags everywhere there's flags everywhere i want to get invested i want to <clears> get hyped i want to get excited but there's just there's flags everywhere yeah i think uh it, it's interesting uh, as as streamers and i think just as anyone that plays video games these days i i see so much like cynicism and even i am cynical about so many things uh and in the past like two to like four years there's been so many different games that have bolstered that feeling i hope we're over that hump <laughs> i hope we're like approaching the the thing where we that like starts to fade uh because it really gets to be a lot but uh, you know, cyberpunk, I think was the, the latest. Uh, well, 
Actually, I guess Battlefield and maybe Halo Battlefield is the degree. latest. Yeah, Battlefield's yeah. probably and the latest. And, and well, and then Rockstar with the GTA stuff. Yeah, like yeah, you're you know, right. the, a company that made fun of Cyberpunk for its terrible release, then releases their GTA Definitive Edition, and it's yeah. just like, what do you even do at that point? You know, um, New World, New World stuff, and I mean, oh god, that yeah, that is know, just a you're, continuing you're cacophony of it. Like, what I would like if that if game companies took a step back and said, what we need to focus on is releasing quality product. <laughs> I think, I think that's, that would, that could really help write the ship. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I, Rami's probably watching and screaming somewhere uh, <laughs> about this, but uh, games are getting so expensive and they take so much time. I think it's hard to like release them on anything but like a five to six year thing uh five to six year period of actually making a game and investors want like a game every two <laughs> right yeah like the people that want the money uh that like actually have stock in all these companies want returns on that stock faster uh it's capitalism yeah. in a nutshell but it yeah it's always been that way like the music industry was is another great example it's like we signed you. Where's our fucking album? Yeah. What we need. Like, let's, we need. let's rush this art. Let's rush this. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, that'll make a we good We need for sure. a bunch of rich people to get together. And they make a pillar. The okay. Gaming Collective. Okay. And what the Gaming Collective does is they only hire on studios to make quality products. And they give them all the money they need to do it. And they give them all the time they need to do it. And then we know that every product that comes from the Gaming Collective that's funded by it is a quality awesome thing and more importantly since they'd be flush with cash these companies wouldn't have to worry about money or anything like that like basically we just need like some kind of giant bank roll like we're gonna save gaming <laughs> okay co is not describing 10 cent no come on no no I mean, no, no, no i vote also directly. Ten, 10 cents in a bad way I, did you guys see that news where china basically said i'm with ten comrade cent. carnage i'm with comrade <laughs> carnage here did I you think see what, this is a good idea. Did y'all see what China told Tencent? They basically said, "Oh yeah, fucking dude, stop. China like just stop." stop. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. China's pissed. That's fucking. China's pissed, and they're bringing in their their, That's their crazy. guys to be like, "You can't make new apps." Yes, like, we're like we need to. I, do you think they're trying to involve themselves more with Tencent? So is that what's going on? No the the reason that I saw uh, at least in, in the news that I covered about it is they have a uh, they have a they have a. Uh, a WhatsApp uh, parallel called, uh, I don't remember the exact name. Is it WeChat? I think it's WeChat. Uh, and basically China wants in on that app uh, because Tencent, I think, was selling the data from that to other countries. And China said, like, you're going to give us a piece of this. And you're also going to let us most likely spy on this behind closed doors. Uh, and I think that was the majority of why they went in after all that shit. So said, when everyone was super concerned about dealing with Chinese companies because they were concerned that the government could step in and manipulate their products, the government is stepping in and manipulating Tencent's products? That's correct, yes. <laughs> that's correct. That's, that's, that's super okay to hear. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it also, I mean, to me, it speaks volumes the fact that they fucking told Tencent to just <gasps> stop. They literally said... You are not able to release any more apps. You will not be able to just stop. And Tencent was like, okay, I guess we're just going to stop for a while. And what else are they going to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like that's, yeah, yeah, it's wild. It's wild. That's a funny thing. Yes. As Chad is, Chad is one giant surprise Pikachu face over this. As they completely. should be. I mean, whoever as thought should that be. companies that would a, spy on things. This is crazy. What was that game that was a hit for a while where the, the big circles, the, the littler circles that got bigger? Snake. It was like, snake. It's snake, essentially. I know what you're talking yeah. about, but it wasn't called snake, but that's what it is. Yeah. It was like it, like an IO game, right? It's or something uh, like that. It was uh, Agar. Agario. Yeah, Agar IO. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. Um, that's uh, how long do you think until it's just Walmart presented by Tencent? Oh, we're already. I mean, we're close. <laughs> like it's just one company left. If you really want to see uh, and get depressed, there's like you can go find some of those charts that show you how many companies own the entire world. Essentially it's, it boils down to like 13 or 23 or something. It's yeah. Disney's in there. Disney's one of them. So 
Anyways, let's end mm-hmm. this on a happier note and not uh, talk about how much uh, we're all just fucked because of capitalist society. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's wrap up these shout outs and call it a show because I have to go take a nap because I have to adjust my sleep schedule for Friday. And that involves a three hour nap, uh, staying up till 5 a.m., sleeping, and then fucking all up because it's not going to work because this never works. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's do some shout outs. Zeke, you want to start us off? Yes, I would love to start us off. Thank you very much, first of all, for uh, all of you out there for watching every week. My name is Ezekiel the Third. You can find me at or slash Ezekiel underscore I I I. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, or Ezekiel the Third all spelled out on Instagram and TikTok. If you like little short snippets of videos, uh, they get posted there as well. Uh, I will be not streaming after uh, today, but I will be streaming tomorrow uh, and for the foreseeable future at 10 a.m. Pacific every day. I'll be finishing up Lost Judgment, which I would have loved to have talked about, but we had we got sidetracked, man. It's all good. It's but uh, just it'll plain, be better because I'll, ha- I'll have a it's, full light. Like, it'll be finished. It's Todd's fault. Todd. Todd ruined he's everything. never. He's not welcome on this show. That's what Zeke's saying. He's putting his foot down. That's right. Except I, I do want to touch his curly hair. So, you know, like I want to get lost in those luscious. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I'll be finishing Lost Judgment tomorrow. I have switched over to the English VO for anybody who wants to lurk and uh, doesn't understand Japanese. I will be having the English VO on for the remainder of the game because it's easier for you guys to, to uh, you know, listen. And it's easier for me to, uh, so I don't have to, I can read chat while the game is going. I did change. And then after that, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I have no idea. I have games, like a list of games. So, oh, okay, JP, take it, take it off my name card. I want to know. What? I'm going to, I'm going to give you a list of three oh, games oh, and I want you to here, tell me which, wise. which one I should play next. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Primordia. Stasis, uh, Michigan report from hell. Being that I Do you know any of those, I I have not heard any of these names. <laughs> I'm I'm hearing things right now. Hold on. I I don't. Uh, is the he, speak up? Uh, random voice in my head. Stasis. Ah. Loud and clear uh, with that one. I think you should play the primordial one. Okay. I think that's what okay. We got a lot of votes for Michigan Report from I, Hell. But I heard the, Jason. The was that was, an option? Was Jason an option? I think that's what was said. No. You're you're talking about Stasis, the, the game from the guys that made Beautiful Desolation, right? The, the South South African Brothers? Brotherhood? Uh, I believe so. Because It's an older game. Not only have I not played that, I've heard it's awesome. Love to hear your opinion on it, and they're actually working on Stasis Two Bone Totem right now. Which yeah, is the be Brotherhood is, soon. is the name of <laughs> the yeah. There's a yeah, game called me. Bone Isometric Totem. Point click. Own Totem. All right, you got to play Stasis. I'm, I'm back on board. No, apparently yeah. it's really cool, and and I'm, I haven't really like found someone who's played it that I that I can talk to. So I'd, I'd love to hear your opinion on it if you end up trying it. Okay. No, it's definitely on my list. Uh, really the the problem Stasis with uh, Michigan Report from Hell is, in order for me to play it legally, I had to have a it, I have to be able to get it on a platform of some sort, GOG or Steam, or I have to emulate it, but I have the physical copy. Mm. And the physical copy is hard to fucking find, man. Hundreds of dollars for a physical copy of that game. You have it? You've got one? Steam does does have it. Oh, oh, you don't have the physical copy. I thought I looked. I thought I was pretty sure I looked. Re. Yeah, it doesn't have a Michigan report from hell. Well, I'm well, you're sure. probably talking about Stasis. No, I'm talking about Michigan report from hell. Yeah, I'm sure uh, if, if if a viewer has it, talk to Zeke. He'd love to play it on the stream, and then I'll send it back to you. Yeah, send it to me. He That'd probably won't send it back. I'd love, to you. I'd love that. Send it to my email. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to derail us. No, no, no not a problem. Co, do some shoutouts. Sure. Hi, my name is Co. Good to see you if I haven't met you. Uh, I am currently playing uh, Final Fantasy XIV in the evenings. We're going to be doing, I think, the winning dungeon tonight. Maybe some more stuff in a little bit. Tomorrow, we are taking a special look at a pre-release build of Elix 2. So if you want to check out Elix 2, it's going to be tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. 
Then on Friday at ADMET, we're going to be jumping into the queue for N Walker. I'll be hanging in there for a little bit. Hopefully not too long. We're going to be doing N Walker then. And uh, then probably a whole lot of N Walker main story quest until we be get, begin our Halo Infinite legendary 100 co cent run. Uh, we're going to see how that goes. It's probably going to be very, wait, you're very filled. Yeah. You're going to play legendary? I think I'm going to try legendary solo. I think. We're going to start on legendary at least. Okay. It's going to be a thing. I'm thinking about doing like death goals and stuff, but I heard it's going to be pretty bad. Like, <laughs> apparently on legendary, you can't even like get out in, like if you get out of cover, you die essentially. That's right. correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My hope is at that least in Halo is, Two, that's how it was. This might be completely different. Here, here's here's my hope. This is a more open world Halo, so my hope is that they reward you <laughs> for going to optional places. So my my hope uh, we'll is that that will somehow. Yeah, I would love to use the grappling hook. It would be unfortunate if, like, the second you use it, you just get killed Dude, in the air where look, you're going. All I'm saying, so we'll see. In Halo 2 on Legendary, you remember when you got the new Mombasa and they had those snipers that were real far away? Yeah, if you were out in the open, those guys one shot you. And it was about. Mombasa. Is it new Mombasa? Yeah. Mombasa. We'll see. Okay. Anyway, yeah. it's it's up. Good luck with that. And then Warframe, I'm, I'm yeah. going to be playing the new War 2 as. Oh, we didn't get to see the, the trailer. Oh, yeah, we'll we didn't want to. Watch the, yeah, we'll watch it next week. I, I'm. Definitely. Yeah, it's really, thing? really cool. Um, so definitely definitely when does that come out 15 i want to say i think it's have they announced the time yeah i want to say it's this month all platforms right. december 15th 2021 there we go december 15th um, so i gotta say i am two wednesdays am from now fully 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 on board with new war i've been looking forward to new war for years so the best part of warframe by far in my opinion is the quest in the world so this they, is like the, the the next big quest world thing since their planet unveiling a lot back so yeah i'm i'm, I'm here for it Someone in chat asked, did they talk about Ludwig going to YouTube? Did you guys hear about that? Yes, we did. Oh, well. I think. I thought that we made mention of that last. No. Can we just that go this now? week or last week? Co, Co wrote it. He just wrote it. He just, he's too, you know. He's, he's clocked out. We're nine minutes over three, and his silly Sally momentary is. Are we still, are we still I think we're, we're still, still recording. We're still we're recording. Still yeah, yeah. We'll, I guess we'll be back next week. I guess, I mean, we'll see if we have some more people. I'm out of here. No, this